Once again, welcome to Rockland. I'm Bob Coburn. We're with Daryl Hall. We're talking about Three Hearts and the Happy Ending Machine and other things with Daryl right now. The name of the song is Dream Time by Daryl Hall from the album Three Hearts and the Happy Ending Machine, the second solo record by Daryl. Our first uh, phone call for Daryl tonight is from Toronto, Ontario. We're going to talk with Judy. She is listening to Q107 and is now on the Rockline. Hi, Judy. Hi. Hello. Okay, I'd like to say, first of all, that I really enjoy your new album, and I think you're an excellent songwriter. Thank you. Daryl. <laughs> And my question is, I was wondering if you had any plans to tour in support of your new solo LP, and if so, will you be touring in Canada? Yes, and yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to start uh, probably in February, or, you know, January, February, somewhere around then, and uh, sure, I'm going to start in the States, and uh, I'm sure it'll, I'll work my way up to Canada, I always do, so I'll be up there. Do you have any idea who's going to be in the band at this time? Or is that a little premature? Well, yeah, I'm looking around for musicians, really, right now. Um, I, I, you know, T-Bone, the bass player from Hall & Oates, is going to stay with me because he was co-producer on the record with Dave and me, and uh, he's going to be in the band. And other than that, I, I, well, and Tony Beard, who played on the drum, uh, played drums, he's an English drummer. And other than that, I'm looking around for guitar players, keyboard players, so... Uh, Anybody who wants to audition, come on down. Musicians all across America and Canada Ooh, are scrambling for that. tapes right now. <laughs> <laughs> Judy, yeah. thanks for being on tonight. Let's uh, turn it over to Kelly. She's in Austin, Texas, listening to KLBJ FM 94. Hi, Kelly. Hi. Hi Hello. Girl. Hello. Listen, I had several questions about your artwork. Now, uh -huh. I'm familiar only with your drawings. Are you involved in any other mediums? Uh, well... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I'm mainly a, a, a kind of, I do car, a lot of cartoons and things. How do you know about my drawings? Oh, you, you saw the book, Dangerous Dances, right? right? Uh, uh, you're one of the three people that bought that book. I'm sorry, what? You're one of the three people that bought that book. <laughs> and what else, Kelly, were you going to say? Never mind. <laughs> and um, I heard about a showing that you were going to have in New York. Did that ever take place? Uh, I was involved almost involved in a thing called it was an art record that a lot of artists from New York were involved in but uh, I was in the middle of doing my album so that didn't pan out and I may be on the next art record and uh, we'll see what happens you know we're uh, we're working on that fill us in a little bit on this Daryl if you would are these political cartoons or are these uh, humorous things or what are we talking about here no I just any kind actually uh, uh, what uh, what I did I I've I've been drawing for years and years and and what she referred to is a book that uh, John and I put out about th two years ago called Dangerous Dances and uh, there's a lot of a lot of my cartoons in the book so uh, you know I'm actually a published artist so we'll see if I can get another one out there someday. <laughs> there you are, Kelly. Thanks for being on tonight. We're going to talk with Ellen now. She is in Miami listening to WSHE and we welcome her to the Rock Line. Hi, Ellen. Hi. Good, real Hello. Good. Hi, Dale. Hello. Happy belated birthday from October 11th. Oh, oh, well, thank you very much. Oh, and I'm the fourth person that brought your book. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> okay, um, I wanted to ask you that when you worked solo before on Sacred Songs, mm -hmm. do you think that it helped improve your relationship when you went back to John? And if so, do you think your current album will do this again? Well, I made the first album for a lot of different reasons than I did for this one. Uh, I, when I made that, that was a long time ago. It was nineteen what? It's nineteen seventy-eight. I made that album. It was released in nineteen eighty. But uh, uh, I think that the, the, at that part of the, that, you know, in the late seventies, John and I were really kind of uh, experimenting with our musical style, trying to trying to get a focus together and uh, trying to trying to figure out what what the best way would to, to put our music across and I think say, that first album the Sacred Songs album was a, was, was an extension of that and uh, I made it with the idea of going immediately back to Hall & Oates this, this album was I looked at it as more of a break from John and uh uh, it, it's the start of something, you know, it's the start of something new, really. And uh, uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I think that anything that I learn along the way will help me, not only as my own writing, but it'll help me when I get back with John eventually. And, you know, it's, it's, all, it's all experience. There you go, Ellen. Thanks for being on tonight. I think this is a good point to play the title track from that first solo record by Daryl Hall, Sacred mm -hmm. Songs on Rockline on the Global Satellite Network. And there you have the title track of the first solo record by Daryl Hall. We have a call from Stacy. She is in Carl Junction, Missouri, listening to 92FM in Joplin. Hi, Stacy. Hi. Hello. Hi, Daryl. Um, I just want to know how you came up with the title for your new album. Uh... <laughs> 
I write lots of things in my journals, and uh, I, I just put like ideas down, and I, I don't really even know where that came from. But I, I was taking pictures for my album cover, and I was sticking them in my journal. And I, one day, I opened it up, and there was a picture which looks a lot like the album cover. And over that, I had written at some point three hearts and the happy ending machine and i looked at the cover and i looked at the title and i said you know that looks good that looks like it fits together so that's that's really where it came from so it's it's enigmatic to you too <laughs> uh yeah actually it is i don't really know what i was thinking about when i wrote it i mean i know what it means to me now but i don't know why i wrote it in the first place there you go stacy thanks for being on tonight let's talk to <laughs> Teresa now she's in ceresco nebraska listening to q102 in lincoln good evening hi this is a fantasy come true for me uh-oh Probably not for you, but for me. <laughs> well, it might be for me. I don't know. <laughs> Could you say hi to Teresa and Carol? Hello, Teresa and Carol. Oh, that's wonderful. I've got two questions. <laughs> yes. First of all, we're looking forward to see you back in Nebraska. Yeah, I'll be back. Oh, and uh, is that Sarah Allen on the Dreamtime video? Uh, let me see. No, it's not. It's oh, not Sarah. Oh, good. And, uh, oh, good? <laughs> Why is that good? Why? Yeah. Oh, I expected you do with somebody taller and blonder, more like you. <laughs> well, she's taller than that, but she's not blonder than that. Oh, she's not blonder. No. You know. <laughs> okay, now, this is really important. Who does your hair for you? It's absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> uh, who does my hair? A guy named Eric the Purple. Eric <laughs> the Purple. There you go, Teresa. Thanks for your question. Wig maker to tonight. the stars. <laughs> That's wonderful. We're going to talk with Tina now in Campbell, California. She's listening to 97.3 The Rocker out of San Francisco. Hi, Tina. Hello. Hello. Bob. Hi, Daryl. Hello. Hi. I have a question for you, Daryl. I like yeah. to know how involved were you with the Sun City album, and do you feel that it was successful enough that it got your point across, so to speak? Well, I mean, uh, it definitely got its point across. I don't know how successful it was. I mean, that's time will tell about how successful it was. Uh, I was involved in it in in because I believed in it and I believe what it's what it stood for and everything like that. Uh, uh, like I say, I'm, I'm I don't know. I mean, w what the what the long term uh, uh, implications? Are, I don't know. You know, I mean, it's. Uh, it was it was an angry album. That's, I think that's why it didn't uh, have the impact that maybe uh, some of the other things that happened in that year, um, uh, some of the things in that year had. It was uh, not quite so safe and clean and uh, happy and all those things, but uh, it certainly uh, meant something to me. There you are, Tina. Thanks for being back on the Rock Line. We're always happy to have you here. We're going to move to Lexington, Kentucky now. Somebody's listening to 98 Rock Double Q. Her name is Sherry. Sherry, meet Daryl Hall. Hi, Daryl. Hello. Hi. I'm curious as to why you decided to co-produce this album as to just producing it yourself. Because I like working with other people. I mean, obviously, because I worked with another person for years and years. And, uh... uh uh, I like bouncing ideas off other people, and, uh, and Dave Stewart kind of happened by accident, as I said before, and I'm glad he did, and uh, I, I thought it was pretty interesting. Thank you, Sherry. We're now going to play another song from the album Three Hearts and the Happy Ending Machine. This one is called Let It Out by Daryl Hall on Rockline. Let It Out is the name of that song from the Three Hearts album. I was asking Daryl at the beginning of the song, who is that on guitar? Jamie West Orham from The Fix plays guitar on that track. We have a call now from Wausau, Wisconsin. FM 95 is our affiliate. And we welcome to the Rockline Amy. Hi. Oh, hello. Hi, Daryl. Hi, how are you? Great. This is terrific. I was wanted to talk to you. Yeah. Uh, my question is... How did it come about that Bob Geldof and Joni Mitchell ended up on your album? Well, because they're friends of mine. <laughs> That's really it. Uh, <clears throat> I saw Joni on an airplane, and, I, and she was going to England with me, and uh, uh, she was going to be there, and I said, why don't you just come down to the studio and, and sing on the song? And I'm really glad she did. And uh, Bob was uh, just around. He was just sitting in the studio listening, so I made him, I forced him to get behind a microphone and sing. And <laughs> he didn't want to, but I made him do it. <clears throat> Joni is on Ride is Rain, and Bob is on Only a Vision and also Next Step. Amy, thank you for your call. We'll speak with Lorinda now in Ottawa, Ontario, listening to Shea FM. Hi, Lorinda. Hello, Bob. Hi. Hi. To say that it was a great special had on for Genesis a couple weeks ago. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It was a fun show. Okay, and hello, Daryl. Hi. Um, I have two questions for you tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay, the first one is, how did you come about choosing your band members for your album? 
Uh, they really just were people that I really liked, and they were available. That's that's basically it. I was in London, and and they it was just whoever happened to be around. And you had another question, Lorinda. Yes. And um, how did it come about for you? How did it come about? Pardon me. For you and John to perform with Kendrick and Ruffin. Well, I knew I knew the Temptations from when I was a kid, really, and back in the late '60s. And uh, when we were asked to play the Apollo Theater in New York City about a year ago, uh, that uh, the Apollo Theater was, it was the kind of place that I started in. In I, I I used to play places like that, so I figured if I was going to go back to my roots, I might as well bring some of my uh, some of the people that meant something to me back in those days. So I asked them, and they accepted. Some terrific moments watching you perform with them, by the way. Lorinda, thanks for being on the air tonight. That had to be a biggest, as big a thrill for you, Daryl, as it was for us watching. Yeah, that, that was an indescribable feeling, i got to say. Let's go back to uh, your original home turf. We have a call from Philadelphia. We're going to talk with Joey. She's listening to 94 YSP. Hi. Mm -hmm. Hi, Daryl. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Great, great. And listen, I saw you on your um, tour when you were in Philadelphia with the Big uh -huh. Boom concert, and it was really great. Oh, thanks. Uh, I was wondering, first of all, when you tour again, are you going to be coming back down to home? <laughs> yeah, I think I'll be in Philadelphia. I usually wind up in Philadelphia at some point, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be there. Um, the other thing was, will you be doing any of the whole notes things when you do your new tour? <laughs> No, I don't think so. I, I, you know, I think I can put a set together without doing Hall and Oates songs, and uh, you know, there would be no point in that. If I wanted to play Hall and Oates songs, I'd bring John along, and we'd uh, do a Hall and Oates tour. There you go. That's simple, Joey. Sounds like a good answer to me. Now, we're faced in just a moment with playing a Hall & Oates classic and not having time left for telephone calls or doing the telephone calls, and I have a feeling you want to talk to Daryl. So that's what we're going to do. More telephone time with Daryl Hall coming up in just one moment. Your number to call is toll-free. It's 1-800-344-ROCK. We're talking rock and roll on Rockline. Once again, welcome back to Rockline. I'm Bob Coburn. We're with Daryl Hall right now. We have time for a few more calls, so let's get right to it here. Our next is from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Somebody listening to WSHE in Miami. Her name is Wendy. Welcome to the Rockline. Hi, Wendy. Hi. Hello. Hi, Daryl. How are you? I'm okay. I can't believe I'm talking to you. God. Yes, you are. Dream come true. We're about yeah. to run out of time, Wendy. See your question, please. Okay. Um, what I wanted to ask is, um, Daryl, about your, your tattoo. Yeah. What does it symbolize? Oh, that's, uh, you got about three hours for me to explain it to you? No, it's, <laughs> it, let's, let's just say it has to do with aspiration, always thinking ahead and always, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a goal to shoot for. There you are, Wendy, a succinct answer for your question. We now speak with Lori in Lansdale, Pennsylvania, listening to 94 YSP in Philadelphia. Hi, Lori. Hi, Daryl. I'd just like to say it's a big thrill to get to talk to you tonight. Yeah. So you're from John's hometown, huh? Yes, I am. Right near yeah. North Wales, in Lansdale. Uh -huh. And I'd like to ask you, um, why was uh, Sacred Song released later than the date that was issued? Because RCA didn't think it had any hit records on it, so they, it took, them, took me three years for me to persuade them to put it out, you know, because I thought it was a good album anyway. What were your feelings then? Were you uh, a little upset? <laughs> yeah, fr frustration is the is the word. Yes, but uh, f I finally got it out. Robert and I, Robert Fripp and I, uh, worked hard at it, and we finally got uh, we convinced people that it was uh, worth putting out. Lori, thank you for being on the air tonight. We now go to Hampton, Sydney, Virginia. Someone listening to XL One Hundred and Two in Richmond. His name is Campbell. Good evening. Good evening, Daryl. Hi. Uh, hey, how you doing? I was wondering, I listen to a lot of your uh, old rock and roll, your older stuff. Uh-huh. And uh, I was wondering how you all made the transition from the older music to the more popular top 40 music of the 80s. Well, it's it's called living. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you know, times change and my brain changes and, you know, you evolve and grow and, uh, you know, my, all the music that I write is an extension of my life, so that's, that's how it changes. There you are, Campbell. Thank you for your participation. We appreciate it. We're now going to talk with Ellen in Flint, Michigan, listening to FM 105 WWCK. Good evening, Ellen. Hi. Um, I was wondering if you could say hi to my best friend, Wayne. His name is Wayne? Uh-huh. Daryl, could you do that? Do we do we have Daryl there? Mm -hmm. I guess not. 
Uh, El- Go, we, go ahead with your question. I thought I heard something in my headphones. Okay, I was wondering what was the most embarrassing thing that ever happened on stage. Do you have an answer for that? We have lost our feed to New York City, apparently, and I have absolutely no reason why. Uh, we'll let our crack engineering crew work on that, and while they're doing that, I have a couple of things that I can pass on to you. On par, David Lee Roth. Ray Davies of the Kinks, oh, oh. <laughs> and a whole lot more. And I'm just dropping a couple of names here. Thanks to Jimmy Fink and our New York Rockline production team, and, of course, to Stephen Piercy and Robin Crosby from RAT. And do we have Daryl Hall back? I think yes. we have you back. We have our feedback. I'm back. Um, instead of me closing with my question, why don't we try Ellen's question. Do you have a most embarrassing moment on stage that ever happened? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one time I did a whole show with my fly down. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I don't wear underwear. Now, that's embarrassing. <laughs> now, Daryl, in, in closing here, I understand that you have been in rehearsal for David Letterman. When will you be on, and are you going to play with Paul Schaefer in the band? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be on on Wednesday, and uh, yeah, we're playing with Paul and uh, the boys, and I also brought some of my... My players in T-Bone and G E Smith is playing, so uh, it should be an interesting show. Well, if I'm not up, I'll crank out the old VCR. I'll watch it one way or another. Daryl, yeah. it's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you for yeah. a great album, and I wish you good luck in, in your solo endeavors in the years to come. All right, thank you. I'm BC, and I'll be seeing you in a week.